Conflict is a natural part of human relationships. In a time like we are in at the moment, when you spend most of your time with maybe one or two or a few of the same people every day, conflict is inevitable. We often think of conflict as a sign of a problem or even a failure in a relationship. This might be true, but conflict can actually also be a sign of the opposite. You see, conflict-free families may be trying to avoid dealing with their problems. Conflict will happen in relationships. What we should try and do is deal effectively with conflict by developing ways that can help us to do so. And this will help us to maintain healthy relationships and create improved communication with all of those around us. Conflict resolution is not about reading dozens of self-help books or spending hours agonizing or analyzing every little dispute. It's about applying some basic principles of communication, respect, and understanding to resolve issues. And so today, I want to take a look at six tips for dealing with conflict. Before you begin a discussion, however, about conflict, you need to know exactly what you want to get out of that discussion. If you don't know what you want, you won't know when the conflict is resolved. And so let's look quickly at these six steps. The first one is to remain calm. You know, when you're angry or upset, it can feel impossible not to raise your voice, shout insults, and let emotions get in the way of logic. None of these, by the way, are techniques for proper conflict resolution. Many people engage in shouting matches where there are insults and they hurl hurtful words at each other. Then they storm off and bury the issue. Not only does the original problem remain unresolved, but both parties feel angry. They feel frustration and resentment about what was said to them. And this cycle will repeat itself again and again and creates deep-seated resentment and pain unless we learn how to work out the problems that are inevitable in any relationship. If you cannot control your anger, set down a specific time to talk through the issue when both of you have cooled down and collected your thoughts and got in touch with your emotions. The second thing is to focus on problem solving. Oftentimes we try to make the other person see why they were wrong by pointing out their mistakes or their flaws or their weaknesses. Resolving an issue means making both people feel satisfied, not one person winning and the other one losing. It might feel good to win at times, but you won't solve any problems if you are going to have a winner and a loser. On a related note, avoid bringing up the past or irrelevant issues, which are usually just used as extra ammunition and are unnecessary. The third thing, listen to the other. In the heat of an argument, one person may wait impatiently for the other one to stop talking so that they can also make their point. And by doing this, we are hearing, but we are not listening. After the other has stated how they feel, mirror it back to them. So for example, if you could say something like, it sounds like you're feeling unappreciated because I don't thank you for what you have done. And this tactic forces you to listen and to accept what they are telling you. It can help them to feel respected and understood. And that immediately 
begins to move you towards resolution. Tell the other how you feel and what you want from them. It may seem obvious, but this is essential for understanding each other, and many people hesitate to express their needs and their feelings. Communication and conflict resolution go hand in hand. You may be surprised by what you hear if you really listen. The fourth thing, be supportive. Be positive and give the other person credit for what they have done right. This shows that you notice and appreciate their efforts and that you are not trying simply just to attack them. Number five, be willing to compromise. You know, this is a crucial skill in any relationship. You cannot always get exactly what you want, but you should be able to figure out how both of you together can have your important needs met in this discussion. And the sixth thing, find out what the real issue is. You know, friends, people often have seemingly petty conflicts that are actually a symptom of a much larger problem in their relationship. Work on figuring out and resolving those issues that present themselves over and over and over again, even if they present themselves in different forms. And finally, remember to be reasonable about what issues are worthy of a serious discussion and which to let go of. If you constantly find yourself angry over small issues, that may be a sign of something deeper inside of you, anger or resentment towards another person, sometimes even pointed at the wrong person. And that's the issue that you really need to resolve. And then maybe those conflictual relationships will be much, much less conflictual.